for him creative zone my guest today is someone who's done multiple hats across his career from being a hockey player to having a journalism stint and now being the star creative that he is we are pleased to have russell barrett the managing partner and chief creative officer of bbh india hi russell how have you hi, been hi. doing up amidst the lockdown and everything uh, that's happening not bad yes not bad like i keep saying to people on calls i could be better and i could be worse so uh, so th- that that's more or less the the uh, the you know the situation in 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 a nutshell like you know, not as bad as it could be for you personally and your you know uh, it obviously isn't uh, ideal in any situation uh, of at any perspective uh, and i did you know now uh, an attempt to make the best out of uh, uh, what's going on uh, around you both right. personally and professionally so tell us about how uh, creatively satisfying this experience has been you know uh, creating amidst a remote captivity because uh, the ad world the agency world is used to a lot of banter a lot of team chemistry cups of tea and coffee sure. and a lot of fun creating very yeah. differently than they do right now yeah 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 no absolutely i mean uh, so uh, see before before today there was no other uh, way of working that any of us knew or even right before the pandemic hit us before we were before it uh, you know led to the kind of life that we're living today this was the only life that we knew and therefore we felt uh you know this was the only way that there was to do things um i think the pandemic has taught us a lot of uh, uh, you know a lot of new skills that we didn't realize we had and it's also uh, you know uh, it's also uh, shown us the mirror in many ways uh, of where it is that we could be a lot better uh, better i'm i'm not i'm not necessarily you know i'm not uh, again like i said i would never be thankful for what it is uh, but i do feel that it's important to be positive and sort of like you know look to see what you can learn from every situation so i think that the pandemic uh, has allowed us to to do that in a way that we've never had a uh, cause to learn in the past right. so you're right when you say you know the 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 chemistry in a room uh, especially when you you know when you're meeting a client for the first time or you're or you're pitching for the first time the chemistry was really has always been really important um and it's extremely difficult to capture the chemistry over a zoom call or a microsoft teams meeting or a google meet it's difficult to capture the chemistry so therefore you know it, it you have to you have to do other things uh the the way that we interact with work uh, has also changed you know uh, personally i've never been a fan of the brainstorm uh, i don't think uh, great work comes out of a brainstorm at all uh, i think good or slightly average work comes out of a brainstorm that's just my perspective of course there'll be people who disagree with me because i feel that ideas come from an individual and then uh, others collaborate to make them better and that can still happen remotely mm. you know uh, uh, an idea necessarily and if you have to be honest with yourself uh, an idea will come from an individual the, the germ of the idea the seed of the idea comes from one person and then the others sort of sort of like you know build on it and say like you know what if you have that music what if you have uh, what if you have it from you know look at it from that perspective instead and that is still possible you know it's still possible online it's still it's still possible to do it over a call uh, but you know the banter the the cups of coffee some of the time that we need to uh, sort of like you know to to break from the uh, you know from the pressure of work that is not there uh it's i think in a sense made us a little more mindful about time and that's a good thing for the for the world of advertising i think we've uh, you know uh, we we've got that to learn and to take forward with us uh, when we go back in whatever way we go back to uh, you know to to work uh, be more mindful about time our own time and others as well you know because i think that that's been a really important learning especially uh, you know when you when you're uh, sort of like you know running an agency and running a big creative uh, a creative department uh, you you need to understand that you know people's time uh, the the work from home aspect uh, 
so, sometimes you you forget that it's from home and then you have to work for the home mm. um, so you know you have to you have to uh, you can't ex- uh, expect people to you know have the same kind of hours that they would have had when they were in an agency so they also have to cook for them they also have to clean the care of their families and so you you are a lot more mindful about time i, I believe and uh, i think that's a good thing it's a good thing for the advertising world as well being mindful about your time and other people's time as well so how is uh, this entire thing of remote shooting been because we are used to flying we are used to a lot of recies we are used to being there and seeing that there is a uh, proper light so what is what has come out of that experience yes yeah so uh, again it's not like we've done a lot of it uh, i don't think anybody has done a lot of it but uh, uh, i have a personal perspective on on shoots as well uh, you know and i feel uh, it's something that i've learned over the uh, over a period of time some some of the some of the some of the greats in advertising who i've worked with have uh, you know had this point of view as well so it's not like my unique perspective but i've come to accept uh, its wisdom more so over this uh, this period of time you know that if you have a really locked down ppm uh, as a creative person uh there isn't that much for you to do on the shoot if your ppm is slightly loose and it's slightly unstructured yeah. and there are decisions that need to be taken then being present at the shoot is super important so i think it puts the pressure on both the production house the director and the agency to have uh you know to have a lockdown ppm because uh you know thinking on the fly at the shoot hey what if we do it this way etc that's not going to be possible uh uh especially in this situation where you know you're 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 sometimes in another time zone and sometimes very often in another city uh and even if you're in the same city not not at present at that shoot right so being having a lockdown ppm uh where every element of the film is thought through is super mm. important and i think that uh, you know it's a good again it's a good thing Uh, it's a good thing to go into a shoot prepared uh, it's a good thing to go into a shoot knowing exactly what you what you want out of it and you know uh, sure you are missing some of the some of the uh, you know experiments happen on this way and uh, i think you can still do do that to to a small extent but it's not as you know it's not as hands on as it used to be in the past but i feel that if you if you lock down uh your ppm really tightly it shouldn't be that much of an issue uh we are we are about to get into a a, a fairly big production now and so uh i'll i'll be able to give you more learnings uh you know post that post sure. that project but um, uh the conversations that i've had with the client with the clients as well uh, and to reassure them about you know the supervision and the uh, the kind of shoot that we need to have has been designed work really hard on the ppm to ensure that all questions all the questions all the people that we will have a much more fluid shoot hmm. so we see a lot of work uh, in terms of you know a lot of uh, uh, ad campaigns being shot on the phone because obviously we have limited resources and all that and also there's a lot of ugc format work that's going up but don't you think that uh, you know there'll be a saturation soon in terms of in terms of that in terms no. of uh, consumers yeah yeah i mean yeah uh, again I, this may not be uh, this may not be a a, a widely shared opinion but i'm not a great fan of you know of the person and the first film that that did it great fantastic they, you know they did something that people had not done before uh, right. and uh, subsequent to that uh, i don't uh, i'm not impressed with another uh, and i don't think the audience even uh, forget 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 about me it's like no i'm not uh, the most important the audience is the most important like, the, you you're, you're not that you're not, you're not that impressed anymore because it's not new you you know it, there are lots of people doing it you come back to the you part of the matter which is how compelling is the idea how how uh, you know how touching is that is that piece of film making and uh, whether or not it's been shot at home it becomes less relevant the the hype about oh we did this at home 
so therefore you know uh, we should get a medal is not is not necessarily you know uh, the place that people are coming from anymore mm. you know uh, again you are you're being you're being asked to to like you no know, uh look at the 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 basic fundamentals of like you know what's the idea and uh, how well is it, is it being told sure you're doing it from home but you can still do it really well um, and sure you're doing it from home but you can still have a sparkling idea and i think that uh, you know uh, that initial first mover advantage is now done you know uh, we are uh, what's the idea how well is it being told so also if you can uh, take us to uh, you know some of uh, some of the work that you done at bbh amid the lockdown that be very interesting sure. also sure. the lockdown took us all by surprise so um, how did you you know what was your uh, reaction initially and you know uh, overcoming the initial hiccups how was how was all of that tell us about that yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, i'll talk about the second part of the question first because i'm sure that you know uh, uh, you know we can we can share uh, the work uh, that we've done uh, uh, you know with you as well through links etc and you can see that uh, but the second part of the question i think is uh, it, it's fairly interesting because um, you know my so my so my son was uh, and i'm digressing a little bit here uh, my elder son was uh, you know as just his 10th standard and you were uh, he is getting admitted into this uh, his 11th grade and the school in the high school or the junior college that he was going to had a meeting with the parents and talked about you know what do you think is the most important skill uh, that your your child should have for the future and this is before the whole pandemic shut down etc and you know all of the parents were going like you know hard work and perseverance and you know all of those things and he said yeah you know that's all good but uh, what do you think is the most important skill and we kept going mm-hmm. back with like you know it's it's this it's that it's um, and his his answer to us really uh, actually you know uh, i kept thinking about it through the pandemic uh, uh, and through the uh, through the uh, through the uh, different reveals and different stages of the pandemic and his answer really was that the the biggest skill uh, that we need for the world going forward is adaptability that's beautiful uh, and and his point was you know from a uh, point of view of education you know you might study to be an engineer and you might study to be a computer engineer you might study like you know uh, everything that is current at the time by the time you graduate suddenly the world has changed again uh, so being adaptable is is really key and i kept thinking about that uh, you know every time uh, 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 you know every time one of these big announcements happen and like you know lockdown has been pushed and lock- and uh, and if i look back at the early stages the people who were uh, more adaptable um, and adapted faster were the people who you know were, were better at it and uh, that's i think that i think is going to be more key than ever going forward uh, having adaptability both as an agency and as a as an individual in advertising or an individual especially in the creative business being adaptable is both far more important than it was before and it's also going to be the difference between success or you know catching up mm. right so uh, so to your, to answer your question uh, back in the day when you know when when lockdowns were announced and extensions happened and then you know different things happen uh, around it, being adaptable and being ad- adapting to that and saying okay fine so now this is the new reality how do we you know how do we move from here how do we react to this how do we uh, you know how do we change some things that we were doing uh, earlier uh, into into another thing uh, and having that mindset i think is going to be extremely critical going forward extremely critical uh, uh, and if you are yeah like you know if you if you're going to be uh, kicking and screaming against the changes uh, you're going to find it a lot tough because change is going to uh, change is the only constant it's the only agency model of the future like you know one that's continuously changing and if you're not going to accept that you're going to be battered by the by the changes that life and the world are going to throw at you and so yeah coming back to that uh, educational uh, uh, that the education i received at my at my son's uh, you know junior college uh, interview i think that that is that is absolutely true for all of us today uh being adaptable to the changes that will occur and are going to continue to occur 
So now if you can uh, just uh, take us through uh, some of your most uh, yes. creatively satisfying work that you've done at PBH. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll I'll start off with actually a film that uh, you know a film that uh, an ex BBH uh, has made and we uh, I collaborated with him uh, it and it came from a very personal space you know uh, where uh, early on in the lockdown where you know people were trying to trying to change the narrative or shift the focus of the narrative to the wrong you know to, to the wrong or to distract people with the with wrong information. Uh, and you know, uh, WhatsApp was being used in lots of uh, in, in lots of dramatic ways. Uh, a lot of hate was being spread, uh, and was you know, uh, the attention was attempt. Uh, there was an attempt to divert the attention to, uh, and we saw that happening at the early stage of the lockdown. And uh, it's something that uh, this 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 uh, ex colleague of mine who, who I worked very closely with for. I think over 12 years, uh, uh, a young, a really young uh, filmmaker now because he's just started uh, making films called Kunal Savan. Uh, and he and I have worked together across three agencies. Uh, and so he reached out to me with this idea that he had and he asked what I thought about it and you know how it should be, uh, how, how we should end it, what, what should the lines be. Uh, and I really liked where he was coming from with the idea. And I said, you know what, listen, we'll help you produce it. Uh, and here are like you know five line options. This is what I think you should say. Uh, and then we we also said, listen, we'll help you. You know, put it out there as a message as well. And uh, the 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 learning from that idea, besides the fact that it came from a very real place and it's something that affected him deeply and and me as well, which is what immediately uh, you know resonates with you when you see that film. Uh, it's a very real message that talks to what's happening in culture around us at that time. Uh, and the other thing that I wanted to say is that that really for me is creativity at work. Uh, because if you see the emoji film that, uh, you know, that Kunal Savant and, and we uh, like, you know, uh, put out there, it was using absolutely minuscule resources, but right. telling a story, okay, let me put it to you this way. If, if you had this idea and you could go out and shoot, or you could do it in this way, it would still be better done this way. You know, so it was an idea devised and created for the skills that you have at hand, uh, not as a compromise because you couldn't shoot. And I thought that that was the beauty of that idea. Uh, you know, it was beautifully crafted. Uh, there was no, uh, you know, there's nothing that you'd want to change with it. Even if you could go out and shoot, this is the way that you should actually be looking at that film. So I, I liked it for that reason, uh, that it used the the limited the limited uh, uh, you know the limited tools that lockdown uh, that lock, lockdown gave us but use them in the most dramatic and the most creative way so if you see the emoji film you'll know what I'm talking about it is uh, the language of forwards it is the language of uh, of, of social media uh, and it had a really uh, you know it had a really profound point to make which is uh, at that point of time I think uh, you know essential. So that was one film that, uh, you know, we did uh, at the early part of lockdown. We also uh, went on to sort of launch for Audi, the whole, uh, you know, the, the showroom from your living room idea where you could, uh, you know, uh, obviously Audi is like every other brand, uh, uh, you know, showrooms are shut down, footfalls are, uh, are non-existent. Uh, and so we launched this whole, you know, uh, building the showroom from your, uh, or, or having a showroom experience from your living room, right? Uh, and that was really interesting because it used new media and it used, uh, you know, it, it was a lot more interactive than you would have, uh, you know, than, than you would have been, you know, uh, you know, in a normal situation where you'd have done a film or a print ad or, a, you know, uh, or a static. So uh, that that was an interesting uh, you know project which I thought was was quite cool. Uh, then I think uh, we did something really really interesting on uh, on Taco Bell, uh, right. where it was it's probably India's first outsourced uh, menu uh, uh, you know uh, menu selection where uh, we got we 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 actually put the the idea was the the first supper, uh, quite unlike the last supper it's the first supper back. Uh, after lockdown lifts, what what would you want to eat, uh, right? Uh, and we created this whole uh, sort of this whole activity where where you know 
uh, items from from the Taco Bell, Taco Bell menu competed against each other, and the people chose which one would be more to their taste. And so then we had thousands and thousands of uh, of like you know uh, interactions, people voting, people saying you know I like the naked chicken taco more than something else, and the cheesy gorita versus the naked. So you know arguments and 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 sort of interactions and voting that happened online. To then be revealed as the uh, you know uh, a crowdsourced first supper meal, which we thought was like you know really cool, and really interesting, and really different. Using again, using uh, the place that people were in, and using the motivation that people were looking forward to. Like you know, we've all fantasized about that meal that we're going to have once lockdown lifts. Yes, this is right. what I'm going to have, and like actually using that uh, using that idea for a uh, for a brand itself was 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 quite uh, was quite fulfilling. Then of course we did a lot of uh, uh, we shot the films on Vivo, uh, the the new Vivo campaign uh, before lockdown. But we did a lot of the post production and a lot of the putting together of those films during lockdown, etc. And they're doing quite well. Uh, the new Amir Khan films. Uh, 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 it's a campaign that we've done. Uh, we've made four films. Two have been released. Uh, two others hopefully will. Will come out soon, but uh, that was another uh, uh, campaign that's done really well for us and has got a lot of uh, traction in the market. Uh, that was done by uh, uh, our Delhi office and headed by Vasudha. Uh, but yeah, that that too again was quite a challenge because, as you know, you know, uh, post production is where a lot of the a lot of the dis- big decisions get taken. You know, you you you've made the you've got the footage and now you're putting it together and, and a lot right. of flips could happen. Yeah, yeah. And again, done remotely, uh, and and uh, heavy files being being sent across, you know, uh, 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 across uh, computers. Decisions being taken late at night, etc. I think we uh, we were able to put together a really nice campaign, and like I said, uh, really happy to hear that it's uh, doing really well out there in the market. Right. Uh, those are a few. Obviously, we're doing like uh, we did a really interesting, uh, you know, social campaign for Tata Tata Sons, uh, which is the numbers of hope. Uh, again, uh, it, at the time where we were just getting heavily uh, sort of depressed with the uh, with the wrong kind of numbers, we did this little video that talked about the numbers of hope, where where uh, Tata talked about uh, the, the the Tata group talked about all of the positive numbers of this uh, of this lockdown. You know the the amount of people coming forward to help, the numbers of uh, doctors on on the streets, the the amount of you know PPE kits that uh, uh, that that were being sponsored, the the amount of money that was being given uh, willingly and freely to to help fight and combat uh, you know these 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 horrible times that we that we find ourselves in. And uh, the great thing is, like you know, the BMC retweeted that video and like you know uh, uh, pushed that out even further. Uh, there was a lot of traction that that. That video did uh, had for us as well. So, like I said, I think uh, I think there's there's and of course there are tons of work that we're doing on a daily basis uh, on social for all of our brands and uh, uh, you know uh, a bunch of innovations that we're that that we're working on as well. And uh, we've developed a lot of work. You know, we've used this time actually to develop a lot of uh, you know uh, for many of our brands. Uh, Ton of work that will hopefully now start to come out. So the thinking and the hard work uh, from the creative, uh, uh, you know, the, from the from the creation part uh, has already been done, uh, already been approved, already been like you know we are now talking to directors and we are getting into production as as it opens up. So some some businesses that had the ability to sort of like you know give it a break, use that time to create. Uh, and uh, have timed it so that now that as things are opening up slowly, uh, we are going to be able to produce. So we've been working extremely hard, uh, extremely hard. So uh, even my family were like, you know, asking me, uh, "Listen, I, uh, we don't think you work as hard, uh, you know, when uh, before lockdown as we see you're working, or is it only because you're at home you're 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 making it seem that you're working this hard?" But actually, it is. It, it has been that. There's been a ton of work. Uh, a lot of creative development has happened in this period of time. So we hope to see uh, like a year's worth of work start to come out uh, as we uh, as we open up more and more. Right. So um, last thing. So COVID-19 is 
is a humanitarian crisis and a lot of award shows all over are talking about not factoring work created for these times it's also tricky for clients these days to you know kind of uh, understand what to say and how much to say because uh, uh, you know the idea is to not how do you not be very exploitative or opportunistic and still make a conversation uh, rather than using it as a mere marketing ploy so what would be your advice to creatives and to brands when making a conversation on the covid 19 yeah so uh, so uh, firstly i feel that you know uh, ignoring the fact that uh, uh, we've you know been in lockdown for over 100 days and ignoring the fact that uh, this 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 horrible crisis has has hit humanity across the world uh, ignoring it is you know doing disservice to to yourself uh, as a marketer and as an advertising person you know you cannot ignore this because it is part of culture it is part of the uh, life that the audience is living uh, so to ignore it would be would be a travesty of sorts you know uh, because you're you're just imagining that this never happened and you're, you're locking yourself up in you know in a room thinking uh, you know whereas your audience is deeply affected by what's happening around them so i don't think ignoring it is the right answer uh, uh, to your other question and i think it's an important question for each individual to answer is uh, uh, you know how do you how do you say stuff without being exploitative and how do you say stuff uh, uh, without being i uh, my my point would be the point that i would make to any market or any advertising person be honest be honest about what it is that you're doing uh, you know right. and if it if if it feels like it's dishonest don't do it i mean it's really really very simple uh, don't uh, like you know uh, don't be no, don't, don't say stuff that's untrue don't say stuff that's uh, that uh, that does not have uh, you know some uh, some element of uh, honesty attached to it uh, i think it's important to talk about and it's important to consider the world that uh, uh, we have we have been left with because of this pandemic so you can't ignore it but you know uh, you'll be you'll be eventually caught out uh, if you're and people aren't forgiving of uh, of brands that try attempt to fool them or attempt to uh, you know pull the wool over their eyes and it's and, and most importantly it's visible from from a from a mile away you know uh, especially if you're if you're paying lip service to uh, to the world that uh, or or you know you're you're trying to be exploitative it's very mm-hmm. visible from 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 uh, you know from everybody's uh, perspective so it will it you probably do more damage to the brand than good uh, be honest about what it is that you want to do be honest about what it is that you uh, that you hope to achieve be mindful of the fact that people have uh, have had a really really tough life right now uh, and uh, you know yeah uh, create messaging that keeps that keeps that in mind i feel it, uh, it's extremely important to 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 carry that forward right as opposed to you know ig- either a ignoring that this has ever happened and carrying on like you know like you know, nothing is you know nothing has changed nothing has everything changed. has changed right uh, you know you have to you have to accept it uh, but you know yeah but don't don't pretend to do things that you're not doing <laughs> right. the the good thing is a lot of brands have stepped up and done amazing stuff uh, during this time you know uh, from contributions to actual initiatives a lot of brands have actually done things because uh, i feel that it's an you know uh, it's something that has affected every single person from right. from the ceo of that company down to uh, you know down to the distributors everyone has been affected by it so you know when you're being if you're being dishonest you're being you know dishonest with uh, from within as well i think a lot of brands have genuinely been moved to do you know to to act in really positive ways right. um, and you know it's it's important to 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 communicate that uh, without being you know without wanting to give yourself a pat on the back or anything but it's important to it's important to go out there and talk about uh, uh, you know issues that actually affect people and what you might be doing about it right 
so i think the positive the positive part of it if at if at all you can you can look at a positive is that a lot of uh, a lot of uh, sensitive marketers and a lot of sensitive brands have taken it upon themselves to make a difference to uh, in some way or the other to to the world out there and uh, i think the audience recognizes that you don't have to you know uh, you don't have to make up stuff to tell them the audience is already seeing what it is uh, that you know some brands are doing and some uh, individuals are doing and some uh, you know groups of uh, uh, citizens are doing even uh, i think the audience is aware of it and uh, yeah beautiful thank you so much rasul for your time and for sharing some amazing creative insights take care stay connected my pleasure stay thank safe. you so much mr thank you thank you so bye bye